Hi everybody and welcome to Columbia River Fellowship. This is our service this morning. And actually this will be our service for the next couple of weeks at least. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what we're doing. For the next two weeks we will meet like this and you're going to be able to find uh, our church service with me and Bill Redfield and some other people. You'll be able to find us find this posted on Facebook at Columbia River Fellowship on Facebook. Uh, a little later on in the day, you can find this on our website at ColumbiaRiverFellowship.org. All one word, Columbia River Fellowship. But first of all, it will go on, well, well, I guess not, it will go on to YouTube on Tidbits of the Word. So first it will be on Facebook. And uh, I'm hoping this will work right. Our plan is next week to have a little better technology, to have uh, maybe some music expanded a little bit. But today, because of time on the batteries of the camera we're using today, I don't believe I'll preach really long, but hopefully this is a message that will reach your heart. Right now, I would like to just open in prayer. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that you would anoint your word. Lord, that you would touch our people, that you would touch anybody that comes to this website or to the Facebook page and, and listen to what I have to say this morning. Lord, we pray for those who need to be healed. Father, we know of people who are in deep need of healing physically and emotionally. And Lord, we pray for them in the name of Jesus Christ. And we believe together that people will be healed and they will be touched and that they will receive Jesus Christ as Savior. We ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Today, I'd like to talk about loving the lost. We have a lot of people right now that are afraid and they are without hope. They have no idea what they're going to do. Their world has been turned upside down. And I believe it's the church's job to reach those people. We need to reach our nation with the love of Christ in any way that we can with the true gospel. But people aren't going to listen if we're a group of mean people. We need to be people who are lovers. Not just people who have the truth, but people who love and give the truth. And that's a tall order because sometimes we are, we just don't understand what people need. We don't understand how they feel. And we know that there are people out there seeking truth because they're afraid. But we're not afraid. But we want to love people enough to take the gospel to them. We want to love people enough to take the word to them. The truth that sets people free. And people need to be set free of this fear that is in our nation, this fear that's in our world. We can't be a people that are afraid to give people what they need. The greatest examples that I can think of in the Bible of true love is Jesus Christ and the Apostle Paul. Of course, we know that John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And the thing we want to focus on is the fact that God loved the entire world. And I'm not talking about the globe. I'm not talking about the dirt. I'm not talking about anything but people. The world is all about people, not everything else. I've heard people say, isn't it about the, the earth? Isn't it about the world? Isn't it about saving the planet? It isn't. The Lord knows how to take care of the planet. But Christ did not come here because he loved the globe. He came here because he loved the people that are living on the globe. So Christ came out of love. The Father sent him out of love. So much so that Christ gave his life on the cross for people even when they were still sinners. Even when we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Greater love has no man than this that one would lay down his life for his friends. And so Christ is the perfect example of someone who loved people so much that he gave everything that he had. Everything that he didn't have to give, but he chose to give it. And that's our greatest example of people or, or of someone who loves people so much that he gave everything that he had when he didn't have to. He gave his life for people that scorned him. He gave his life for people that beat him. He gave his life for people who scourged him. 
He gave his life for the people that put the nails in his hand and, and hammered them in. He gave his life for the thief on the cross. He gave his life for everyone. Not just for them, but also for the future. And we're living in that future. And right now we're looking at times that seem to be biblical in proportion. And the most important thing to understand is God still loves us and he will never leave us or forsake us. And that's the type of love we need to take to the world. We need to do it. It's our calling. The Apostle Paul said in Romans 9, 1 through 5, that he had a great sorrow and a continual, and continual grief in his heart for the lost people in his country and the nation of Israel. He had a great sorrow. And he was grieved over people's unbelief, over people's fears, over people's lack of hope. That motivated Paul like nothing else. He loved the people that he went to. He loved them so much that he said this. He loved them to the point where he could, he could wish he were a curse from Christ for his brethren. He wished that, you know, I could wish that I were a curse for the sake of Christ, for, for all the lost people, all my brethren, all my friends that have not accepted Christ. That's how sorrowful, that's how much sorrow he had for this group of people, a lot of the people who were persecuting him. Paul had the same desire that Christ had. He was willing to give up his life. And eventually, Paul did give up his life to take the gospel to people, to love people, to pray for people to lay hands on people, to teach people. That's what Paul was all about. Yeah, and sometimes he exercised tough love. He had to write letters. He had to teach them, but still he loved them. A group of people who love will take the things to people who are in need and give it to them. And the most important thing that people need is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it is the gospel of Jesus Christ that gives hope to a world that has no hope. Nothing else gives hope like the gospel of Jesus Christ. No one gives hope like Jesus. We know where we're going if, we've been, if we were born again. We know where the, that the Lord's going to take us. We know we have an eternity in heaven. But not everybody in this world knows this. In fact, probably most people don't. They've heard it, but they don't really believe it. We have to show them that we have hope like no other people ever has. We have to tell them that this hope is real. We have to tell them that God sent his son to die on the cross for us because he loves, he loved them so much and loves all of us that much that he would die for us. So we have to show people by example what that's all about. And yes, I know that you can live it and people won't get saved, but you can live it and say it and preach it and people will. People need to see it. And many, many times I've spoke on the fact that there's a lot of emphasis on living, but not on the word. But today, my emphasis is going to be, it is going to be love that gives us the unction to give the word. It is love that motivates us to give the truth. It is love that motivates us to help widows in need and orphans in need and people in need where we can show the world the love of Christ. That's our calling. The scripture says in Ephesians that we were created for good works. That's why the Lord created us. We are to live out good works. But good works without Christ is just dead works. So you have to be a person who is born again and then take that love, a love that nobody else has, and take it to the world. Because right now, the world needs it like no other time. In, in my lifetime, anyway. In my lifetime, I've never seen something globally affect so many people than this virus. And I'm not afraid. The people that are in this room right now that are working with the technology, they're not afraid. But there are a lot of people who are. And I'm telling you, Jesus Christ overcomes that fear. The love of God will overcome that fear. If you want to overcome this fear, accept Jesus Christ as Savior. Talk to a person that you know was born again, and they will tell you about the hope that is within them. They will tell you that we have hope beyond hope. 
And that overcomes this fear that people have. We have a love that no one else can have because the Holy Spirit lives in us. So these two examples of Jesus Christ and his love and the example of Paul and his love, these are two examples that show a deep commitment to those without hope. That's true love. That's agape love. That's commitment to people. And I know, looking within myself, that I've got a long ways to go. But so does everybody else. But God is calling his church to this. God is saying, you're going to have to love people like I love people. You're going to have to be willing to give of yourself to other people. That's the only way this world is going to overcome all of this. And there are going to be people who are going to scorn you for talking to them, for trying to love them. And that's okay. But there are going to be people who respond. And of course, that's much better. But how do you know who's going to respond and who are going to get mad unless you try? Unless you go out and love them. Because greater love has no man than this, so that one would lay down his life for his friends. So the scripture calls us to not hide our light. Don't put it under a basket. Like the old little song says when we were kids, don't hide it under a basket. No, I'm going to let it shine. That's the song that we all grew up with. And that's scripture. Let the world see our light. Now, some people may say, well, I don't think we're supposed to yoke ourselves with unbelievers. But you need to understand that you can love people and you can help people and not yoke with their sin. You can meet people's needs and you can talk to people and do your best to be Christ to them because this is what they're going to see. You can do your best and not yoke with their lifestyle. Because I think, really, people who have a lifestyle that is contrary to God, if they're open to talking to you about the Lord, they don't want you to live their lifestyle. They want to see something different. So we don't yoke with people in what they do, but we do reach out to people. And that's the call of God. That's what Christ does, and he uses us. The scripture says, in fact, that it isn't the world that we're supposed to stay away from. It's people who are so-called Christians that do all these immoral things and live a lifestyle that is contrary to God. They say they're Christians, they say they're brethren, but they behave like they're not. The scripture says we're supposed to kind of stay away from those people, but we're to go into the world like Christ did. Yeah, there may be people out there with pretty rough lifestyles, but Christ wants to reach them. And you're the way, you're the person, you're the one person that he's going to use to reach them. So we need to have the love of Christ for people, just like Jesus has a love for people. Jesus Christ is calling. Jesus Christ is saying, receive me. And if there is anyone out there listening that has not received Jesus Christ as Savior, you can do that today. You can say, Lord, I agree with your word. I know I've been living a lifestyle that's wrong and it is causing me all sorts of trouble. I have no hope. But this guy in front of this camera says there's hope in you. And so I repent of my sin. I know these things aren't right. I argue about it, but deep down inside, I know they're not right. And I know that I need a savior. So Lord, forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I receive what you did on the cross for me, and I believe that you rose from the dead. And I receive your spirit. That's what you need to say to the Lord. I'm not trying to get people to come to our church. I do want people to come, but if you don't come, that's fine. Receive Jesus Christ as Savior. Get in a church that preaches the word of God, that believes this Bible is the word of God. Get there. Learn what the Lord wants you to do. Learn how we're supposed to live. He will help us do it. He will give us the power to do it. He died on the cross to free us from sin, to give us hope. That's what the Lord is all about. So if you've received Jesus Christ as Savior, please let us know. And I want to end with this quote. It's a commentary. It's a commentary for the book of Hosea. And I'll get there in a minute. I love it when I open my Bible up right to the spot where I want to be. And this quote says this, and I don't know who wrote it. It doesn't say. 
but I liked it. It says, if the people around us do not see God's love in us, they will not find it anywhere. We are called to demonstrate God's love by our attitudes and actions to a world blindly groping for authentic love. And Jesus Christ's love is authentic. Now I'm going to end real quickly with this. Uh, people have asked me how they're supposed to give, how they're supposed to give their tithe. So for right now, to give your tithe to Columbia River Fellowship, just put it in a mailbox, Columbia River Fellowship, P.O. Box 314, Mansfield, Washington, 98830. So go in the love of Christ. You can call us. You can look at our website and get our phone numbers. You can talk to one of the people in our church, and we will help you receive Jesus Christ as Savior. We will lead you there. And if you have needs, let us know. If you have prayer requests, let us know. So thank you very much for listening. God bless you. Amen and amen.